new world order is not a new concept. Its objective from the Genesis until today is to rebel against the authority of God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because there is no other. Its origins can be traced to the book of Genesis on the place of Shinar where Nimrod proposed to build the Tower of Babel. Nimrod's name in Hebrew means revolt. He was known as a, quote, murderer of innocent men and a rebel against God. He was Satan's disciple in Genesis 11. Babel means confusion. The Bible says God is not the author of confusion. Babel means known as the city of Babylon. Josephus said of Nimrod, listen, quote, he gradually changed the government into tyranny to turn men from the fear of God and to bring them into constant dependence on his power. End of quote. Does that sound familiar? That's what's happening right now. Nothing has changed. Just the technique. COVID-19 has politicized control to turn Americans from God. Some states were and still are controlled by corrupt leftist politicians. They violated the Constitution of the United States. We were told that you can't leave your house for six weeks. You can't go to work. If you don't go to work, you don't get paid. What politicians don't stop to think is their salary goes on. It makes no difference what they do. Your salary is cut off if you don't go to work. Now back to Nimrod. Nimrod's compulsion for absolute control set the foundation for the new world order. Nimrod intended to become the dictator of both the government and the counterfeit religion that he and his wife put together. Consider Nimrod's counterfeit religion, and this is in Genesis 11. Nimrod married a woman named Samarimus. He declared himself to be the king of Babylon and his mystical bride as its first queen and high priestess of idolatry. Here at Babel in Genesis 11 is introduced as the first organized idolatrous religious system in the history of the world, and it survives until today. Samarimus knew enough about the revelation of God to know that God had promised that the seed of the woman would bring blessings to the world in Genesis 3.15. She had a son. She named that son Tamas. Tamas. Samarimus claimed that her son was divine and the divine fulfillment of Genesis 3.15, the seed of the woman. Have you got all that together? Here we go. She made herself and her son the objects of worship. The symbol of this false religious system was called the mother-child cult with the mother holding the child in her arms. This cult spread to Phoenicia and then to Pergamos and then into Asia Minor. And we find it in Revelation 2, 12 through 13, where the Bible says, quote, Pergamos is the place of Satan's throne. Pergamos is the place of Satan's throne. Satan lives there because the mother-child cult was there. From Pergamos, it went to Rome. I want you to hear this, church. We are on this earth, according to this book, to be salt and light. Salt stops corruption, which means it irritates. Light destroys darkness. Satan is the prince of darkness. Socialism is darkness. That we are the source of truth to a nation that's now stumbling in deception because of our national leadership. We are the source of hope. There are people who are giving up hope on themselves and hope on this country. We are built on the solid rock, Jesus Christ, who is hope to the hopeless. We are the source of confidence. This book and the church of Jesus Christ are the source of confidence. God is with us. I've been asked a thousand times, what are we going to do? We're going to press on because God is with us and everything is going to be all right. (laughs) 
We are submitted to God Almighty and to his son, Jesus Christ. End of story. Whatever someone cooks up, it does not affect us. We are in another government with another king, with another constitution, and we'll stand on this. So Merima set herself up as the only approach to God. She adopted the title of the Queen of Heaven. She taught that salvation came through her by the means of sprinkling of water and ceremonial cleansing. There was a purgatorial cleansing after death. She created temple virgins that are now known as nuns to pray for her son who was allegedly killed by a wild beast they were to fast for 40 days, that is now called Lent. And at the end of those 40 days, they would celebrate the Feast of Ishtar, which we now call Easter. They gave colored eggs to each other to celebrate eternal life. You see how much this has followed us all of these thousands of years? We're still doing it. Listen to me, church. Listen to me, audience across the nations. We, the body of Christ, celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ at Easter and nothing else. We celebrate his victory over death, hell, and the grave. Because he lives, we shall live also. He and he alone is the resurrection and the life. Give him praise and glory in the house of God. This mother-child cult spread to Israel. When Ahab, the king of Israel, married Jezebel, he married a foreigner who had been raised in the mother-child cult. Jezebel immediately started putting the prophets of God into prison. They actually put them in caves, but they were prisons. Why? Because a socialist dictatorship cannot stand a Bible-preaching ministry. Soon afterwards, Israel started worshiping Baal. Think about this. The people who received the Ten Commandments, the mother-child cult, and God sent severe judgment on Israel. When God called Abraham out of Ur, he called him out of, out of a home that was devoted to the worship of the mother-child cult. Abraham's father kept his idols till the day he died. Joshua 24, 2. God commanded Abraham to leave his father's house in Genesis 12. Why? Because there must be separation between light and darkness. What you are willing to walk away from will determine what God can bring you to. You must walk away from darkness before you can embrace the light. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. The Bible speaking through the pen of St. Paul. What fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? What communion has light with darkness? Listen. Come out from among them, saith the Lord, and be separate from the world. That's God's command to the church. We're not trying to be like the world. We are the light of the world. Turn on the light. Forward to Jeremiah 44. God tells us why he's coming to send the children of Israel into captivity in Babylon. They worship the mother child cult. The Bible says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's not a request, that's a command. In Ezekiel chapter 8, we see the Jewish people in the temple of God who are worshiping idols to the Queen of Heaven. Go home and read that today. God sent Ezekiel to the temple to peek through a hole in the wall to see what the people in the temple were doing, and they were praying to the queen of heaven. This is the Babylonian cult of, of Nimrod and Samarimus. The people continued to worship the mother child cult, which remains a global and powerful religion that will clash with the Antichrist for global control in the near future. Why? Because they both want the same thing. 
The Antichrist wants to control the world. And the false religion that's coming is going to want to dominate the world. The Bible clearly teaches in the book of Revelation, Rome will be utterly de demolished and destroyed as the Antichrist destroys the mother-child cult and becomes an instant global dictator. There is one mediator, listen closely, there is one mediator between God and man. It is not the queen of heaven. It is not a man. It is the Lord Jesus Christ who is king of kings and lord of lords who was crucified for you and I. Therefore, God has highly exalted him, Jesus, and has given him a name above every name. Say that with me. He has given him a name above every name. That means above kings, above presidents, above dictators, above anything that looks like religion on the earth. His name is above every name, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, end quote. Give the Lord praise in the house. Every time the doors of this church are open, we celebrate Jesus who loved us and gave himself for us at the cross. Without the shedding of blood, there was no remission of sin. Jesus who washed us whiter than snow. Jesus who took our poverty at the cross and gave us the wealth of Abraham. Jesus, the great physician who heals our body. Jesus, who gives us peace in the midst of the storm. Jesus, who bears our burdens when we can't go forward. Jesus, who hears us personally when we pray. Jesus, who gives us confidence in the storms of life. We sing the song, Jesus, oh, how sweet the name. Jesus, every day the same. Jesus, let all saints proclaim his glorious name forever. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Jesus is his name. There is no queen of heaven. There is only God the Father and his son, Jesus Christ. Can I hear an amen? amen. Second appearance of the new world order, Satan came to Jesus. Jesus is on the earth in his earthly ministry. And Satan came to him and said, if you will fall down and worship me, I will give you the kingdoms of this world. And they were Satan's to give. When he was kicked out, he had authority here. Satan was cast out of heaven and he became the prince of darkness. Listen, prince is someone who has authority in his kingdom. Satan had authority until the cross. Now, that's why socialism must control the church. We live under the authority of God Almighty and his word. We will bow to no one but Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Israel is the only nation on earth created by a sovereign act of God. We owe the people of Israel a debt of gratitude for their contributions that gave birth to our Christian faith. As a ministry, we support the Jewish people with our words, actions, and resources. To thank you for inspirational support of the Holy Land, we will send you our Why Christians Should Support Israel devotional and a Jerusalem keychain. For your gift of $250 or more, we will also send you a leather-bound Hagee Ministries Prophecy Bible, a City of David DVD, and handcrafted Meja Maria candle holders custom made by Ethiopian Jews in Israel. God declares a blessing to those who bless the Jewish people. Stand with us in prayer for the peace of Jerusalem. Send your gift today. Call the number on your screen or visit jhm.org slash chosen. Socialism must attack the church, and they will attack the church if we allow that to take our government over. Jesus to the church, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine before men. Say that with me. You are the light of the world. Now, what does that mean? If Satan has authority in the kingdom of darkness, when you as a Christian open your mouth and start quoting the word of God, you are the light of the world. 
Darkness cannot stand light. Darkness runs when light is turned on. So stop whining about the darkness and turn on the light. Out of European history comes the Illuminati. That name means enlightened ones. They were a super secret organization of international financial power brokers in Europe and they had as their goal a worldwide empire, a new world order. Their leadership consisted, listen, of Satanist and atheist. Ironic that followers of the Prince of Darkness thought of themselves as the source of light. When someone comes to you quoting Dribble and says, I saw a light, and it revealed this to me. What did it say? And if it didn't say what's in here, you're talking to the devil's crowd. Think about that. Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. That's in the Bible. They too wanted to kick God out of society. Just as America's liberal left wants to kick God out of society. Socialists want to kick God out of America. Educators who are teaching your children mock the God of heaven. Secular humanists mock the God of heaven and they control the educational systems of this nation. Fast forward to the 20th century. The new world order continues after World War I, the war to end all wars. President Woodrow Wilson produced something called the League of Nations. In man's relentless pursuit of a one world government, it failed, then came Adolf Hitler with the Third Reich. Adolf Hitler promised the German people that he would bring Europe a new order that would last a thousand years. He promised peace and prosperity. Listen to me. Socialism always comes promising peace and prosperity, a better life. And as soon as they suck you in, they make you their prisoner. He dragged Europe, Hitler dragged Europe into the bowels of a living hell. He turned Europe crimson red with rivers of human blood. Hitler's SS corps were occultists and Satanists. Their objective was to cast God out of the German society. Pastors in Germany who disagreed with Hitler were put into prison. Hitler murdered six million Jews, God's firstborn son, according to the book of Exodus. The apple of his eye. Nazism was a socialist religion, and Hitler was Germany's Messiah. Don't you ever forget it. Their salute was a sign of worship to a man and not the God of heaven. Today, the United Nations in New York wants a new world order. What does it mean? Listen to Brock Chisholm, the director of the UN World Health Organization. He said, to achieve world government, it is necessary to remove from the minds of men, listen, one, their individualism, two, loyalty to their families, three, national patriotism, and religion to cast God out, to control you, to take away your freedom. The UN is the modern Tower of Babel. 70% of those people cannot spell human rights, but they want to tell you how to live. They think they are ready to rule the world. Get serious. I agree with the slogan, get America out of the UN and the UN out of America. There's going to be a new world order and soon. It's not going to be the socialist utopia that self-serving politicians in Washington DC think it is that the Marxist professors at America's universities are clamoring for. It's going to be a global dictator and absolute slavery for mankind through the Antichrist. From the Tower of Babel in Genesis, to the UN, to the godless in our Congress who worship the deep state, who are trying right now to kick God out of our country, out of our churches, to control our schools, to destroy our constitution, which honors the God of heaven, not corrupt politicians in Washington. God Almighty is about to say, it's enough. You've rejected me. You've rejected my word. You rejected my son, Jesus Christ. I'm going to turn Satan's Messiah loose on the earth, the Antichrist. 
He's going to make Hitler look like a choir boy. He's going to make you take his sign in your hand or your forehead. And if you don't take it, he'll cut your head off. He will slaughter one-fourth of the earth's population. He is going to produce seven years of hell on earth. The coming new world order will be the Fourth Reich. The Fourth Reich will be much like the third, only worse. It will include the United States of America. And I take this point because there are preachers who are teaching that God would never allow evil men to rule this country. Wake up. How do we know that the Antichrist is going to rule America? The Bible says so. It doesn't mention America, but it mentions the world in which America lives. So listen, the Bible makes it clear in its identification to the great sea. What is the great sea? Daniel 7, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea. Again, what is the great sea? Revelation 17, 15, John gives the identification, and he said to me, John, John the Revelator, not John Hankey, he said unto me, the waters which you saw are the great sea. Listen, they are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. The great sea is the whole world. There's another verse to prove that. Revelation 13 and 7. The authority was given unto the Antichrist over every tribe, over every tongue, and over every nation. Revelation 13, 7, the last half of the verse. Read it. The point is, the Antichrist is going to have complete authority over the United States of America before this monster gets his claws into the hands of the world. The church of Jesus Christ is leaving this earth in something called the rapture. The trump of God is going to sound and we're out of here. Listen, for those of you who miss it, at a time of political instability, in America, at a time when our economy is challenged because of hyperinflation, because of all of these millions and trillions of dollars we're giving away now, someone has to pay for that. There will come a time when we can't pay it, and America will yield its sovereignty to a foreign power. Our economy will be merged into a one-world economy, a one-world government, a one-world religion, and a one-world currency, and it's not as far off as you think. People are not buying too many things these days with cash. Now I want you to hear about the last invasion on planet Earth, Earth's last empire. John describes the arrival of King Jesus in Jerusalem. Revelation 19, 11, and 15, And I saw the heavens open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. In righteousness he doth judge and make war. And out of his mouth goes a two-edged sword. That's the word of God. And with it he will smite the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. What does that mean? He's going to rule them by this book right here. War against two. Those nations at the Battle of Armageddon in Israel, the armies of the Antichrist and out of Europe will present a 200 million man army of the kings of the east. Those armies will be annihilated by King Jesus. He that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Listen, how do you know that's true? John the Revelator says, his eyes, Jesus, were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. Why? Because he's king of kings and lord of lords. Here is the verse. He is clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Whose blood? When we start coming from heaven, and the bride of Christ starts circling over Jerusalem, and Jesus sees this battle of Armageddon, for world supremacy that will destroy the holy city of Jerusalem and Israel. He wipes them out. 
none of them survived that fight. He threw Satan into the lake of fire and the false prophet into the lake of fire. John said his garments are covered with blood because he just defeated every anti-Semite down on that ground. Now, and the armies which are in heaven that's the angels, and that's you, and you, and you, wearing white robes, followed him on white horses. That's a lot of horses. And he said on his vesture, on his thigh, a name is written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw the beast and the false prophet were cast alive into the lake of fire. And of his kingdom, the kingdom of Jesus, there shall be no end. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Be of good cheer. The King of Kings is coming. There's a new world order coming. It's Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you for standing with us in support of Israel. Across the globe, anti-Semitism is rising. Your support is more vital now than ever before. God promises when you bless Israel, He blesses you. Our God reigns, so expect supernatural blessings in your life today. Stay tuned. Pastor Hagee has a special blessing just for you. During World War II, most of the world turned a blind eye to the Holocaust and Hitler's atrocities. Christians were slow to act and did not speak up until it was too late and six million Jews were murdered. Right now, thousands of Ukrainian Jewish families are fleeing the Russian army for the freedom of Israel. Imagine fleeing with a baby in one hand and a toddler holding the other with all of your earthly possessions in a sack over your shoulder leaving your husband behind to defend your country. These courageous families need our help. The time for action is now. We do not know when the borders will be closed. Silence in the face of evil is evil. God will not hold us guiltless. Take action today. Donate at jhm.org Ukraine or call the number on your screen. God bless you and God bless the Jewish people. And now, Your Blessing with Pastor John Hagee. And now may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. And may the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you, giving you His peace. Do not be dismayed by what you currently see happening on this earth. God has promised when you see these signs, lift up your head and rejoice, your redemption draweth nigh. We, as a church, honor the state of Israel, God's chosen people, according to the mandates of the Holy Bible. May you know that the blessings and the favor of God is upon you because you too have chosen to bless the Jewish people. We say to the nations of the world, the King is coming. Jesus Christ is King of Kings and He's on His way. We are prepared for that meeting in the air. In Jesus' name, receive this blessing. Amen. Amen. 